Hello, hello everybody! My name is Hocus Pocus, and this is the Minecraft Let's Play. I'd like to welcome you back and also wish you a Merry Christmas. I hope that you had a good time over the holiday season and that you enjoyed time with your family and friends. I know that I surely did, and I'm glad to be back making videos again. I did take a couple of days break, as you may have guessed. But we should get things back underway from today onwards, which is good. So um, we're starting off here at the uh, villager breeding, trading, seclusion area. Don't know what to call it yet. Uh, because we got a couple guys um, that I've been trading with over uh, between episodes. So we've got our Fortune 3 and Mending guys here. And then one, one baby was in here when I came last time. So I guess these two managed to have a baby somehow and uh, produce another librarian. And another one of these guys is one that I forced from the uh, breeder over there. So let's just check them out because I've kind of forgot what they uh, have to offer. So this guy has got 18 emeralds for respiration. Uh, that, this is the trade that I'm after, I believe. So five emeralds for infinity is kind of... Uh, I mean, infinity, I don't know how useful that's going to be to us, but this is very cheap. So uh, we've got infinity guy here. Let's give him a name quickly. So just name the name tag infinity infinity there we go and that was this guy i believe right just want to double check yep so he can have that name tag and i believe this guy is selling a channeling book uh for around okay so he has an infinity as well for 13 but he has a channeling book for 11 so let's name him channeling wait let me just double check how to spell channeling i think it's C H A W N N E L I N G. yep okay let's uh let's get that down as well Channeling, channeling, there we go. So that's him named as well. So now we have all of our villagers named and up to date. And these two I'm still in the process of trading with. So haven't actually uh, got as far as um, working out their best trades yet. But I've just realized as well, it's kind of dark down here. So I should probably put some torches in. I'm actually uh, surprised we haven't had any spawns in here at uh, up to this point. But there we go, we've got some torches in now, so we should be good. And we can head back, oh, here we go. Oh, how did he hit me? And I can't hit him, that is incredible. Right, come here. Okay, he's dead. Okay, so uh, yeah, as I said, let's make our way back towards our base here. Um, because I have something else to show you, something else I've been working on between episodes. And it involves the cactus farm. So as you know, um, I was kind of, um, kind of in between changing the facade of the cactus farm and well no I, I think I came to the conclusion in the end that I did want to change it but just wasn't really uh, in the mood to get it done so I have actually gone ahead and done some work on that so why don't we head down there now and take a look before we get anything serious underway in this episode um, I changed the layout and well I mean you can, you guys can see for yourselves it's it's a fairly big change I guess um, but I've made the change in a way that meant that we didn't have to actually move the farm back any blocks or forward any blocks or change anything like that. So uh, I'm actually kind of pleased with the way it came out because it saved us a ton of work. Um, although, of course, I had to put in work to get it changed anyway, but that's besides the point. And also, while we're running past, I actually uh, managed to get the leather together to... Uh, install these item frames for our redstone closet that's why the cows were roaming around in our base back at the top there and apart from those two changes this i think the cactus farm is the final one so we changed the design to look a little something like this um we also installed a few lamps on the inside just to prevent spawns uh, okay so let me kind of just run through a few things here these blocks here the polished andesite i don't know if i'm going to keep those as they are that could change to a different texture um, everything else is going to remain as it is though. We've installed a chest here which collects all of the uh, blocks of cactus and just gives it a central location to be stored. Um, and then as you can see at the top here, we've kind of replaced one side with um, the sandstone half slabs. So I don't know what you guys think. I'm kind of verging on the side of the half slabs. The only thing that gripes me about it is that the water uh, drips through. I, I was under the impression that half slabs didn't have this feature, but I guess they've changed that now. So I, uh, we could, I guess, go ahead and get rid of the green glass on the right-hand side and replace it with the sandstone slabs as well. But as for the facade, this is what we're going to go with, I think. I think it looks a lot better than the original design. We could also fill in these blocks here with something if we want to, the uh, gaps that we have there on the arch. But aside from that, I like the way it looks. So uh, 
that's how things are going to go. And I think we might actually repeat the uh, pattern on this side of the wall as well. Just kind of give us that sort of like arched hallway kind of look. I like that design. So uh, yeah, that's what I've changed between episodes. Apart from that, nothing else has changed. So why don't we go ahead and progress with the video? Okay, everybody, welcome back to the video. So um, I think in today's episode, we're going to work on getting ourselves together a furnace room because currently, um, you know, we don't actually have one. So when I want to smelt something, I sort of uh, come back to the small chest room over there, empty out any of the furnaces I have in the misc storage area or the storage chest, I should say. I put them up around our uh, crafting table over there and then I just smelt everything and then once it's done I tear all the uh, furnaces out and put them back so I think it's time we had something a bit more permanent don't you? Um, I've tore out the vines here that led up to this opening here because I think this is where I want to build it so if we actually just strip out some stone like this we're gonna have a three wide staircase that takes us up to that section or that uh, floor you could say I guess that floor of the base it's sort of a, a, an, uh, a raised layer. And we're just going to work up like this. So the stairs are going to end right here. Uh, just in line with this stone out, outcrop thing here. And they're going to just progress backwards. And we might have to tear the portal out again. Which is uh, kind of annoying. That I don't have a permanent location for that just yet. But we will find one eventually I'm sure. Okay so this is kind of an issue here. We have this uh, sticking out. But I, yeah the design is going to be similar anyway. So uh, we can blend that in somehow. We shouldn't have to worry. Okay so there goes the portal. Let's just clear out a few of these blocks here. So that we can continue digging out our staircase. And we have a friend from the nether. Who is about to uh, die. Sorry pigman. Anyway, there is our staircase carved out, so let's throw the stairs in now. So we're just going to go with stone brick stairs, I think that's the best choice here. Just to keep things consistent, that's what we've used elsewhere in the base. And then, um, I think eventually we'll have a path that leads down this way and across to the cactus farm, or the tree farm, something like that. Just to uh, keep things uh, flowing around the base and uh, make sure that everywhere actually, every pathway actually leads somewhere important, because, you know, Bases don't deserve to have pathways that lead nowhere, and neither do we want them. So let me just clear out the rest of the portal here, and we can uh, probably get to work finding a, or digging a, location for our furnace room. Alrighty guys, so uh, ahead of me here we have the space that we have uh, sort of uh, organized for our smelting room. So. As you can see, our staircase comes up like this, and we have about a nine block corridor, and it opens out into this room. So I dug a little bit out, but also there was some space already cleared from the abandoned mine shaft that we had down here. Um, I've decided to move the room slightly to the left. I was going to centralize it based on this corridor, but I think that we should probably leave this huge square open so that maybe we could eventually build something... Uh, Something kind of central to uh, this area here that then has buildings wrapping around it. And also something that we shouldn't forget is that we have a cave spider spawner right here. So either we're going to use that or destroy it someday. Um, as for now, I am totally unsure about its final uh, conclusion. So this will be the space that we're using for our smeltery room, as I said. And then if you come out this way, we kind of have another corridor, which is uh, obstructed by a few things here. But I was figuring that maybe this could uh, have stairs either run upwards or downwards to a different location that is just sort of a second entrance and or exit to the smeltery. So I think this is going to work out. Anyway, I should probably get a little bit of work done here. Uh, get the starting starting sort of foundations of this room up and running. And then we can uh, come back together and check it out. All right, you guys, welcome back again. So um, I'm just about to craft up some hoppers for my smeltery room up there. And we need 14 hoppers on each side of the room, so that's a total of 28. 28 times 5 iron is 140. So we're going to need 140 iron here. Um, <laughs> who knows how much that could be. Uh, right, let's just keep taking it out until we get it. So that's 63. That's another 63, so that's 126. That's 135. 144. How much did I say I needed? 140, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4. That should be enough right there, I believe, if I am following track correctly. And then we can put this back. So I, I, I'm pretty sure I need 140, right? I can't actually remember how much I said now. I believe it was 140. Anyway, let's uh, 
grab ourselves some dark oak logs. We'll grab those as well because we're going to need to make a bunch of chests right here. Uh, we need 28 chests in total. So that's going to be a total of 56 wood. So we can we actually only need one stack here. We just need to uh, convert that like so. And then we can just keep going and going and going until we've got enough chests or enough presents, gift boxes at the moment. They look slightly different due to Christmas. Okay, so let's uh, pump out some of these, pump out some of those, and pump out some more there. One last one, 28, perfect. So our calculations were indeed correct. So now let's head back up towards our smeltery location just so that we can head in, take a look, and install these hoppers together. So we head up the stairs, straight forward. And we've kind of narrowed the room down a little bit here. It's going to be uh, just five wide. I think that's fine. Uh, we've pushed it back, as we said, to uh, this block to allow us to have this open area to view into this center area if we decide to do anything with it. So, um, right, how is this going to work here? We need to have seven hoppers going in the back of these furnace and seven hoppers going into the top of these furnaces. So let's uh, carve out the back here just so that we can access them. There we go. Just pop a few torches in to avoid any spawn. So individually, they need to go into the back of these furnaces like so. And they also need to go into the top. And as you may notice, we're also using a bit of brick here. So I did go out and grab some clay. I've been smelting it up as we go. Uh, so we've got 28 actual clay blocks left, but I've been breaking it down individually just so that we don't overuse it or overcook it because I can't see brick being a block that we use too often, um, if I'm honest. So... Uh, yeah, we're just trying to regulate how much we actually use here. So let's place in those hoppers as well. Like so. There we go. And then the brick stairs can go back into place. So we're going to kind of go with the uh, grey pallet blocks at the bottom. The brick stairs in the middle just to give it a bit more depth. And then behind the brick stairs will be the uh, furnaces. I don't know why brick. I guess it's because of fireplaces. But brick sort of uh, lines up with the smeltery theme. That's why I went with it there. Uh, we also actually need a few more furnaces over here. I do have four over there, but they are being used. So let's craft four more with our uh, crafting bench here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Perfect. And then take back our cobblestone so we can just pop those in like so. And then same again. We just dig in behind the furnaces here so that we can place in the hoppers because, of course, we do want to be able to uh, run fuel in the back and smeltery, smeltable items in the top. So let's grab our hoppers here. One, two, three four five six seven good stuff and then the same thing again on top we just need to uh, place a hopper on top of each furnace two three four five six seven there we go and if you're wondering why i've left this block blank that's because of course we need somewhere to uh, gather all of the smelted objects and that reminds me actually we're going to need a ton more furnace uh furnaces a ton more hoppers to uh, filter out the items but i'll do that at a later date or a later stage i should say and the this block here will be where the chest is going to go for those items to be uh, centrally held. So that is why we've left that gap in the middle there. And I, I think actually we can probably just fill in this block because the, the chest is actually going to go in that double space there. Because the hoppers will come down out of the central chest and into, sorry, out of the central furnace and into the chest there. So that's how that's going to work. Anyway, you guys, let me keep working here for you so that we can uh, get this room finished up within today's episode. And I will be right back. Hey, hey, welcome back. So you guys, we have got something up and running here and something that is actually functional. So this is the design. Some of you may have recognized, may recognize this. And if you do, that's because it is a design that Wells Knight has produced a tutorial on before, similarly to how I used his design for the cactus farm. Um, he produces some pretty cool designs. They're usually the 15 minute build ones, but yeah, this one is ripped from one of those videos. So, uh, if you want to build it for yourselves, that's where you can check it out. So the way this functions is we need four minecarts with chests in them. So let's just craft those. There we go. Four minecart with chest. We need to place each of those on the powered rails at the start here. Uh, we probably need to uh, build up there. So let's just do that. There we go. So there we go. Three, four. Perfect. And then we need a way to power these rails so we can just use these levers for now. Um, and the way this works is you you press the lever and the carts are sent off around the system and then they make their way back and they'll keep rebounding throughout until they've basically dispensed all of their goods. If you turn the levers off, you'll see the carts actually come to a stop 
at this point so you can access them and fill them up with anything that you want to smelt. So how about we give this a trial run? I've actually got a bit of iron and gold in this chest and some coal which is uh, handy. So let's just uh, space this out a second. So we need one, two there and eight, 16, 24, 32, 40 there. So if we pop Oh, if we pop five coal in there, the coal has to go at the bottom, or does it? I don't know if it matters actually. The iron in the top there, then we'll put the gold in the top there and the coal there. And then if we hit both levers, as you'll see now, the minecarts will begin to fire up. And for some reason, it isn't working correctly. It's dumping all of our stuff. Is that because, oh, I see now. Silly me. Silly, silly me. Our, some of our hoppers actually have stuff in them from when we were building. So that is preventing the machine from working correctly, which is not good. We're going to give this another test run in a second, though, so don't worry. Um, I'm glad we actually got that out of the way because I wouldn't have noticed that until uh, probably a long time. And... I've actually managed to get that issue solved immediately here, which is nice. So uh, let me just hop um, hop up the back here so that I can take a look at the top hoppers just to check they've got stuff in. Okay, so we've got a gold ore there, but it's not smelting. What's the reason for that? Okay, we've got stone in there. Classic. Uh, we've got another issue here. That's the stone again. we got an issue here. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, but we've got our... We got our gold. Okay, I see an issue as well. I didn't actually put enough coal in, did I? You actually need a piece of coal for each furnace at least. Um, aside from that, though, it looks fine. So let's actually turn this thing off so that the carts can uh, come to a standstill again. There we go. Um, and now you can see that we're actually beginning to smelt some ingots up, which is nice. Um, what I'll do, guys, is... Oh, we didn't actually get coal in there for some reason. I should probably prepare an actual test for this because that was a terrible test and then once we've done so we can come back and join each other again for another trial run of this thing and hopefully this time get it working properly. Okay so here is take two of the test run of our um, furnace room here as of course the first time round we completely messed up the furnaces had jammed and the hoppers had jammed and things just weren't going as planned so I actually did add in the filter hoppers to actually withdraw any completed items from the furnaces and they just get dumped in this chest here on the floor um, of course design isn't particularly up to scratch at the moment but I doubt we'll get that done within today's episode we can maybe save that for maybe save that for next episode or a upcoming episode anyway let's just check out what we put in the chest so up top we've got a stack and a half of cobblestone that's going to be our example smelting example smelted item so it's going to go from cobblestone to uh, stone and in the bottom chest we just have a ton of coal to help fill up the furnaces so uh let's send the coal out first and just uh check out what happens here so as you can see the coal is filling up nicely and the chests are uh, returning and leaving again filling up as they go. So now that that's running, let's send out the top carts with the uh, cobblestone in. As a reminder, they have a stack and a half each. Off they go. And now the furnaces will light up and begin cooking. So as the cobble, as the uh, chest mine carts go back and forth, the cobblestone is filling up in the furnaces and the coal, of course, is also filling up as we have the coal chest running back and forth too. So this is exactly how it's supposed to work. And then every Every time a smelting job finishes, we should get roughly nine, uh, sorry, seven items as we have a row of seven furnaces here. Of course, you can extend this to uh, any length that you want, but I th figured that seven would be fine for us because we don't want to go overkill, really. We can, uh, obviously, if we ever need to in the future, we can build a huge, absolute mass smur smurf, smurfing, furnacing smelting is the word I was looking for. Of course what I'm trying to say is in the future if we ever do need to build a huge mass smelting room then we can obviously do that but at the moment I feel like this is good just for a sort of personal use I guess 
from when we come back mining. That is really what I'm thinking about here because of course every time we return from our mining sessions we have a bunch of iron and gold that we can't really smelt very easily but now that we have this room everything should be a ton easier. So as you can see the items are being dumped into this chest as we expect them to and that is exactly how this room is going to function and should be functioning. So everything's working and running very well. Um, I think before we end things here I might try to get a floor design in. Um, probably use a similar one to the uh, the floor design that we have out here in the uh, ravine section of our base. So let me just take a look at that. Obviously we have the uh, mossy cobblestone and a few other grey textures. Whoa, that scared the life out of me. Oh, you guys. Oh, there's another one. I'm, I'm so glad I don't have face cam or anything because you would have seen me jump out of my skin there. That really terrified me. Um, it always does when I get a mob in the base because, you know, I'm not used to it. Usually we don't get any because it's very well lit up in here. But when we do, it tends to scare me like that. So I'm super glad you guys weren't able to see my face there because it was probably a picture. Um, I don't know where they came from, honestly. So I don't know where to light up. I would maybe guess it was up there. So let's do a running jump torch place. Huh, there we go. That works, I guess. That should hopefully... Uh, Avoid any spoons on that block if that's where they came from. Anyhow, you guys, um, we're going to transition here now into the uh, floor building section of this uh, build. So, catch you in a sec. All right, you guys. So, as you can see, I'm just in the uh, in the middle of placing down a few blocks to form the flooring in this room here. Uh, just trying to get things looking good. Um, so, as you know, I. I do like this texture combination that we've gone with here. This is the uh, one that we've been using throughout the base quite commonly. It's the mixture of the mossy, co mossy cobblestone, the uh, cobblestone stairs. We've got some andesite in there, some crackstone brick, and finally some gravel. So all together, it kind of combines to make quite a nice looking uh, flooring in my opinion. So that's what we've gone for again here. Uh, I'm literally just finishing up the finishing touches of it right now. So I'm putting in the last few blocks here just to make sure that everything is up to scratch. Um, that can go in there. We need one block here. I could probably go crackstone brick there. And a crackstone brick there. Maybe we should actually replace. Let's go a gravel there and then put that there maybe. So. I think that should be fine. There isn't any space left over, is there? Oh, there's one block gap here. So let's just pop you in there. Or, yeah, that works, I guess. Okay, so there's our flooring. Of course, it is very similar to uh, the one, the design that we have out in the ravine itself. And it is supposed to uh, be similar to that because we're kind of trying to keep a theme running throughout the base where we possibly can. And I just like to get that bit of green in here because we were going to go for a natural kind of nature oriented look in this base if possible so I figured that using green is probably the ideal color to get to achieve that goal um, again for the ceiling we might use the arch design with the leaves anyway so that's going to add a bit more green and a bit more uh, a bit more uh, natural block use to the build itself but that's going to have to wait for another episode unfortunately because we're running out of time here today to get that finished up and I feel like we could make a big um, part of or at least half of a video out of finishing the design up here anyway because there's still quite a bit of work to do even though it's such a small room. I think a lot of the a lot of the uh, technical aspects of this room took up a lot of time i.e. the uh, this definitely took a lot of time because it's so intricate to get all the rails in there especially when they're only they only have a block of space to operate in. It's kind of difficult to be placing them down so uh yeah, that did take quite a while today, and obviously um, we are running out of time, as I said, so I think we'll just continue with the design work in another video. Anyway, you guys, I really hope you did enjoy what you saw from today's video. Uh, once again, I would just like to wish you all a Merry Christmas, and I hope that you're enjoying the holiday season, as I am. I do like to get festive at this time of the year. It's one of my favorite times of the year, so uh, I do hope that you guys feel a similar way. Um, well... Um, I don't know where I was heading with that sentence. Sorry about that. Um, I meant to say, if you enjoyed today's video, drop a like down below. Don't know where I got well from when I was trying to say that, but I did find that word and uh, allowed it to leave my mouth. So, yep, as I said, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like down below. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments in general, 
make sure to drop them down in the comments section below. And I urge you to if you have anything to say at all, because I will get back to you, I will respond, I read them all. So make sure if you have anything at all to tell me or ask me, put it down in the comments section below. And finally, if you're new around here, then why not subscribe? It is free after all, and it allows you to stay up to date with this series and anything else I decide to post on the channel. So you guys, this is a goodbye from me. Be sure to take care of yourselves, take care of your families, enjoy the festive season, and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.